Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun hello. things going on in Linux, open source, that hello is one Joe Bryan, all the way from Los Angeles. I'm yeah. Old Man Vin, sitting around mm -hmm. doing the thing in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joined by everyone watching us live on Twitch, maybe you're listening to us after the fact, it is brilliant. Now, I was kind of terrified. Fate Why always... Then? Well, several reasons. A, the existence of the movie Spice World. This has been a long standing issue. <laughs> yeah. um, outside of that, fate always conspires. Wednesday, if I order something, if I order something tomorrow and I select next day air, it'll be here next Wednesday. Yeah, always. <laughs> Usually not during the show, but close enough to where it's a problem, right? I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And this was definitely something that showed up that said, hey, I need a signature. I'm like, geez, all right, fine. Fortunately, it showed up right in the pre-show. Fate, you didn't quite get me. But it was the thing. Joe gets up. I was like, all right, I'm going to run up for a minute. And I'm like, all right, yeah. cool. I'll sit here and <laughs> dance and dance. And up oh, there it is. Okay. So there was like, you know, a minute and a half of like, bye stream. Just hang on. <laughs> yeah, we'll no one's. Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. We were talking in the uh, pre-show. Yeah. About, uh, I, got, I got a ton of videos. I did a lot of uh, recording for them because I have to break stuff down in the studio and redo the lights and set up cameras. I got like boom arms and things with cameras attached to them, which mm -hmm. is uh, no small effort to get set up. So I tend to record like all the B-roll footage for three or four different things. And I'm working on a bunch of things. I'm doing a Firewire audio thing for Linux just because I realized earlier this week that I'd never just laid out here's exactly how you get everything up and running with Firewire audio because I know that's coming more and more of a thing because these Firewire interfaces are just getting incredibly cheap and they're way overpowered you're like oh man I can get this $1200 interface how much did you pay for it $70 like oh what's wrong with it oh it just uses Firewire but what about the uh, don't they make the USB version of that yeah how much is that 1200 bucks oh <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's wow. better, right? You're like, no, same thing. They just changed the connector to the USB. Uh, there's an example of that that I will bring up because I happen to have one of those in the rack right now. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, using OBS with a jack, that's going to be a thing. I got a fun little video about uh, the blue thing back in the rack, that uh, 1970s Orban mm -hmm. ds -er. I'm going to compare that against an open source uh, ds -er. And I'm currently working on, if you follow on which or on YouTube, um, or even in Discord, better yet, a guide about how to set up control surfaces properly in Linux with Adur and Reaper. So you get both of them. And Reaper is a nightmare to get set up correctly for MIDI CC. I'm not going to go into all the details. Stay tuned. Um, as always, those go out early for patrons as a like, little thank you. And also, I straight up use our audience as like, did I make any grammatical errors or anything? Let me know in the video before we release it to the public. And everybody's been really good about that. But do you know what I got in, Jill? What did you get? Allegedly, you haven't opened the box yet. No, I don't. It could be bricks for all I know. It didn't feel like <laughs> yeah. bricks. I didn't shake it. <laughs> I had a couple of people ask me this over the years. They said, I want something with built-in DSP, digital signal processing built into the audio interface, right? And mm -hmm. a couple of companies have released this, but they don't have anything for Linux. You know, I'm talking like, can I get an EQ? Can I get a compressor? Uh -huh. And you can kind of do that with things, but then I have to show people, like, we have to do it with also Mixer, and they go, yeah, I want a GUI. I want something I can click on. I want something that looks like a compressor and an EQ. I found an audio interface that has a graphical user interface for the onboard DSP. Oh, nice. I'm going to be telling people how to get that set up, and it's very reasonably priced. And here's the shocker. Oh. It's USB. It's not some weird moon PCI card or anything like that. Oh, cool. Awesome. It'll be something <laughs> you can just plug in, and you're like, because... You know, the story goes, you can make an album with EQ and compression. And that's that's kind of true. So that's really all you need. Um, hopefully, we'll find out. Maybe I just get a box of bricks. How about you, Jill? I know Jill got excited. I looked yeah. at the notes and Jill's like, man, they made stickers. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, not really stickers. I was like, yeah, those are stickers. And Jill's like, they're more than stickers. Stickers, Vin. Like, they Whoa. are. So yeah, I'm I am actually very excited. Yesterday, System76 announced a new refresh 
to the whole Thelio series, but this time it's a refresh of the case that can be customized. And now you can customize the front of the case with swappable accent color panels on the right hand side of the case. And you have your choice of Neptune blue, Martian red, there's a PCB circuit design, there's their classic wood grain, or my favorite, which is far out pink, which is matches the color of the shirt I am wearing, our Linux Gamecast uh, one chair <laughs> shirt in our, you can get in our merch <laughs> store. There <laughs> and you it's go. my Marketing. favorite color pink. <laughs> and I also have a keyboard that I could use with my Thelio when I get it. Yes, I just got this in the mail yesterday. That's a keyboard? <laughs> yes. So that this looks is like a, a diseased Girl Scout cookie, man. Like oh. Thin nuts or something. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, it's a 60% mechanical keyboard with blue switches. It is the Miami color scheme with vibrant pink and turquoise and it's a tribute to the miami vice and the 80s colors and i've always loved these colors together they're beautiful and uh you know i won't be using it for my broadcasting rig though because it is a bit too loud it uses a uh, b switches which are just too loud for for my broadcasting and podcasting but i'm gonna i'm gonna put it on one of my other uh, hook it up to one of my other computers but yeah so this is honestly i have now uh, over 50 pink keyboards in my collection and I, I like to swap them out every month and uh it's just something i enjoy doing and i, I love, love the hoarding. 60%. hoarding is like the only disease that people <laughs> brag about <They're> like, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> that's awesome is it just yeah. like usb yeah, USB C, and it has a. Uh, um, it it actually has really good RGB on it. It's one of the reasons why I wanted this particular one. <laughs> so I have a little bit of a uh, of uh, unicorn vomit. <laughs> How many um on my keys. Windows keys does it have on it? Just the one, which is nice. So I'm going to be putting you know a text penguin over that, okay. like I always do. Probably get a, a pink. I have a different color of text penguin stickers for buttons, so I got a pink one that I'll put right there. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone we got to talk about it it was an announcement <laughs> cat pretend it didn't happen that's right that's right mm -hmm. nvidia did a thing and that's what we're going to start with i know i know yeah hey, listen huge exciting. fan huge fan of nvidia <laughs> take a look back here audio yes. listeners go go to it in <laughs> linus is a huge fan as well <laughs> he is so you knew this was coming here it is a new generation of hotness from our loving, loving friends at Big Green. Now, we knew this was going to be an announcement for like the high end, and they didn't really disappoint with us. You get the 4090s, the 4080s, and the other 4080 that's not really a 4080, but we're calling it a 4080. And we even get a few benchmarks. You get the DLSS 3.0, they showed that off. I'm like, that's cute, whatever, blah, 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 blah. All right, now to the things I'm kind of interested in. They did bring up the um, new version of NV Encode. Like, okay, and, like, and we're going to have dual encoders. I'm like, oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> dual AV1 encoders. Right. Kind of excited about that. And um, AV1 support is going to be, they even brought up DaVinci Resolve. I'm like, why do you do this to me, NVIDIA? Why? Yeah, I saw, I saw the keynote. You, yeah. It's just like, <laughs> man, like, you, you, know, you know how to separate old man Vin from his money. And you know what? We're going to be seeing AV1 support you know, by this time next year, because I really hope AMD's announcement is on the 3rd of November. And it would make sense that, you know, NVIDIA had time to make sure they had hardware AV1 encoding since, you know, Intel announced, hey, we're doing you know, hardware AV1 encoding. So NVIDIA like, yeah, we're doing it too. Here it is. It'll be out uh, next month. Uh, I'm curious to see what AMD does if they do AV1 encoding, because Intel eventually when they release the seven series cards, we're going to be doing AV1 encoding too. This is going to change the landscape of live streams, especially for Absolutely. gaming. Absolutely, uh, things yeah. like 1440p, you know, um, high refresh rate streams will become possible. HDR is going to become possible. It would be feasible to do a uh, 4K 60 mm. stream to some reasonable amount, much lower bandwidth. It's basically everything that you can do with HEVC H.265 currently. 
but you're not allowed to because of patents. And that's really a big mess. However, I know this is going to come as a huge shock to some people. These things are priced like uh, like they were being scalped, man. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. <laughs> 40, 90, 24 gig, $1,500. Get wrecked, NVIDIA. I know. Get absolutely know. wrecked. <laughs> and the real 4080, the 16 gig version, eleven ninety nine. No. No. Yeah. No. And, it, and, and yeah, that's several hundred dollars higher than <laughs> their the previous 3000 series. Right. So. Like uh, the, the 80 <laughs> series is not even the top of the line. Like it used to be like the, the Titan, the big, yeah. the super, the like the one that came in its own briefcase would be $1,100 and we would go. You spent eleven hundred dollars on a video yeah. card, you mad person, you crazy person. But to <laughs> the tell me, forty ninety is going to be interesting. <laughs> Fifteen ninety nine? Uh, yeah. No, that's that's just too much uh, for my taste. And the forty eighty, which is not the top of the line, and it's only got sixteen gigs, eleven hundred dollars. Go play in traffic, Nvidia. Yeah. That's not going to happen. I'm never going to be separated from that. And what really threw me off is they had a nice little video showing, um, you know, somebody building the you know, YOLO gaming rig, whatever. That 4090, the Founders Edition, if it's not four slots, it's 3.59 at its slimmest. Mm -hmm. like, the chonkers <laughs> barely covers what this thing is. I mean, it is bigger than the 3090. It's insane. Yeah. It's like laughable. Like that thing takes up all of your, you think of like your regular non HET. HEDT motherboard, which you know you, you typically have one by sixteen and another by sixteen at the end. It's going to be a close call if you put it in the first one to your second one with that amount of spacing. That is just crazy. I think it's uh, yeah, it's it's priced like uh, there was a GPU shortage, and they're going to keep the thirty series around, Jill, for a little bit. Uh, yeah, they're not going to completely. I think like okay. the thirty eighties or whatever are going to stick around. I just kind of zoned out. I only tuned in for the um encoding talk and okay. uh, again it, it makes me sad because i thought by this time if you would ask me this time last year like what would you be talking about and i was like i'd be talking to everyone about my new intel 7 series gpu that i'm using and i'm not because yeah. i yeah. can't buy it yeah well unfortunately ven yes yeah, it's, it's true about the the memory sometimes nvidia does skimp on that i was hoping that the uh 4080 would at least have 24 gigabytes like the uh 3090 did in the 3000 series so <laughs> i thought they would up you know each one because you're paying more money <laughs> so it made se makes sense and but I am actually looking forward to playing Portal with RTX on, and it looks like with this card you can do that at a at a good frame rate. <laughs> so that'll be cool. But yeah, there's going to be several uh, games that you can play with RTX on on the 4000 series cards. And yeah, this was actually this this really is an outstanding card, and. Uh, it even has a unique shape. It's it's rounded on the sides. It's very strange, <laughs> which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice to have something different. <laughs> and there's a portal being played with RTX on with all those uh, beautiful uh, shadows and and uh, ray traced uh, reflections. It's so cool. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> Fun. It's neat. Uh, RTX is going to be available as a uh, not RTX, but the Portal RTX build is going to be available as free DLC, like later Yay. on, whenever that comes out. But I don't, I don't know. You might need a 40 series card to play it. Which again, I'm like, I'm, I'm not. You. Uh, yeah. <laughs> DLSS is neat. I it took me a while. It took me all the time until the second Quake. No Doom. Doom is the new one, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, Doom. That yeah. was uh, the yeah. first time I get to see that on a 20 series my 2060 i was able to use the dlss two point whatever and i was able to play at uh 2160p 60 fps on a 2060 I'm like okay that's neat and it looked good I'm like you'll sell me on that the rtx the ray tracing and all that like yeah kind of looks neat but i don't want to take the performance hit and that's another thing they're talking about they have like some the equivalent of like out of order execution in the 40 series for ray tracing or something like that 
that's the best my smooth brain could make out of it. And if you know exactly what it is, feel free to write it in the show. But again, I'm only concerned with like dual MV encoders or dual AV1 encoders. You got my attention. Depends on the price. None of these cards, I don't think most people at home are interested in the top end. They're like, oh, that's neat. I'm sure some, you know, like maybe in the future, like maybe five years from now, you might pick one up. But if you're like me, you're like, well, let, let's see the 3050 or the 4050 in the, um, 4060. Yeah. And after you just, you just bought a, um, you know, a new 3000 series card. It, it, it makes sense. Just wait for the next series no, after John, these. Yes, I bought that. that <laughs> I got, I got to put that back in the box. It's a collector's item now. It's, it's an EPGA video card. Now. <laughs> yeah. It'll be worth get the, nothing in the future because they've made a billion of them. Um, you got the 3060 12 gig. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. That's it. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I don't think the days of, uh, you know, high end, the high end being $500, those days are over because that would require self control. Yeah. And people don't have that. No, <laughs> they don't. Me, I don't, I've never lived up like once I bought the top of the line card and that was a 980, like seven, eight years ago. And I hated myself for it. I was not happy, and it was like a five hundred and eighty dollars card. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, it just felt I know. bad the that entire was... time doing it. I, I'm planning to buy a you know seven hundred fifty dollars card. It was the it's the RX sixty nine hundred XT, and it had been well over a thousand as of course a few months ago. But the prices keep dropping, and I'm waiting it for it to come down to seven hundred, the one I want, and then I'm going to grab it. <laughs> Because I want to, I want to live, I want to live that uh, playing, being able to play games in 4K with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Pretty you might nice. have to end up playing the waiting game. Gets tricky, especially <laughs> like because RDNA three during the AMD announcement, they're like, yeah, and it could be. Oh, by the way, the card that Jill wants, or it, it, it's happened to me with different cards. They're like, we're going to release mm -hmm. this other card that's half the price, that's twice as fast. Yeah, I know. That's always, yeah. If you wait too long, then the next series comes out. But then yeah. you have a different choice. You're like, oh, well, how about the original card? How cheap is it going to get now? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Or do I wait for the, yeah, it's. It is a, a waiting game. I, I picked up an RX 6600 XT just to, you know, just just to have something in between until I get the big boy. <laughs> so. Right. Um, and again, I'm just sitting back like, you know, I hope AMD has a very nice offering. This go around and something as price performance. I really hope they bring in AV1 encoding because their VAPI encoding is just a dumpster fire, always has been. You yeah. don't want to fight me on this. I will prove I'm right using maths. And um, but if they brought something to the table with AV1 encoding with DaVinci Resolve Resport, but AMD's really got to step up their uh, big, super evil, bad, closed binary professional graphics drivers mm -hmm. because those are the ones I need to work with the software I use. Yeah, and absolutely. The, open source Mesa project. That's brilliant. We were talking about that in the pre-show. Like all of my boxes, except for the OBS rig are running. Um, well, this one's running AMD integrated and this one's running Intel. The Mesa project's awesome. Not the drivers I need for the software I use. And uh, the ones that AMD has releases their, you know, their pro drivers on Linux are atrocious. They are bad. They fight you. They will say disparaging remarks about your mother when you're not looking. Um, it's not a good story. And again, I was hoping that Solus Corporation number three, Jill, would be in the <laughs> yeah. game and I could buy an Intel card and just make everyone upset because I already give AMD a lot of money and I already give NVIDIA a lot of money. <laughs> I'm like, let me give Intel a couple of bucks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> then I could have RGB. And AV1 encoding. <laughs> and AV1 encoding, which is all I really want. And who knows? Who knows? Who knows? What I do know is I'm very confused about this next story. I've tried to put it together. Yeah, exactly I am a bit too. Yeah. What it is. <laughs> We're talking about Plasma Big Screen. Hello, Plasma Big Screen, a privacy respecting open source and secure TV ecosystem. Plasma on your TV. Uh, here's the thing. You know, if I understand this correctly, it, you can use a Raspi or another ARM powered device, you know, just like hooked up to your TV. And. I went like looking around like, oh, can I do Netflix and all this other stuff on it? Which I couldn't find an answer to, you know, if it used uh, Wide Vine, Wide Vine for yeah. the Netflix or hardware acceleration or anything like that. I, I couldn't find anything. You know, at first, when I first saw this, I'm like, hey, when, do, do, do they make a like OS that you can load onto your existing TV? Which that would be neat. No, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's not mm -hmm. what this is. This is yeah. more of a 
homebrew Apple TV or Roku or the Raspberry Pi or even a Pi phone. There's like images yeah. and stuff that you can go and put <laughs> it in. And, you know, it's based on two different distributions. You have your KDE Neon for the Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, Postmarket OS for just basically everything else, I mean, that you can dream of. The website, Jill, I feel could use a little bit of clarification because I just went clicking around. Um, yeah. Like, what? Help me out. Okay. We got yeah. Some, what do you I, think? I found more information under the install uh, website when you clicked click that because it talked more about the the different OSs. And then as you're reading, you realize, oh, oh, so this is for for loading on a Raspberry Pi or a Pine phone or other mobile device. Or a mini computer. <laughs> or a mini computer for, like, yeah. you know, just like your TV. If we go over to install, let's have a look. This is yeah. what we get. Installation. <laughs> yeah. Simply download big screen image for the device. Extract it. If you have the raw image file, flash it to your drive using DD. So you, that's... Do you know how yeah. much of the... Okay, I know what DD is. Yeah, or a graphic tool. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not 100%. I would love... Oh, there's apps, though. There's apps. Yeah. yeah, there are apps in there. I found that. And you can do a <laughs> Mycroft voice recognition with like the Mycroft AI. Mm -hmm. That That is cool. I was really happy that they included that. And I'm hoping that they'll include Mycroft AI in their Plasma Mobile, which Plasma Mobile, by the way, for phone is amazing. So it really makes sense that they're making a big screen version of Plasma and it does look beautiful. And uh, I know this is an awesome project and uh, looking forward actually to playing with it. Yeah, they didn't, I was looking through the app store, like most of the apps were apparently only created two years ago. They haven't been updated. There was one that was only created one year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Plasma on the big screen makes sense, if, but they need something yeah. a little more slick than this. They need a little more information on uh, their landing page because I can't be the only one who hit plasma dash big screen dot org and had to go through like three different revisions of like what exactly is this supposed to be yeah and yeah <laughs> man wouldn't it be neat though if somebody just released released a just a big dumb panel with like a raspi cm4 slapped in the back of the thing where you could just load whatever you wanted on it and yeah sweet <laughs> yeah because i don't want a smart tv i don't think any of us it probably anybody watching mm wants a smart tv because uh, what do you get what do you get with that like apps that are going to be old and slow and outdated and not supported in a year you're going to get some really bad wi-fi you're going to get like uh data collection built in and they're going to serve you ads you're like no i just want a big dumb tv and or yeah. at least i'd like <laughs> don't you want to put likes on your tv i know i do maybe in the yes. future this will be something to do it with you know and if you forget about it you can always take a note yeah <laughs> Absolutely, Ben. And speaking of notes, I've actually used many note-taking apps over the years on Linux, but now there is one that I will be using a lot more often since it now includes many new features that I need for my workflow. And that app is simply called Notes, and this is version 2.0. And it is a free open source and cross-platform note-taking app written in Qt. And it adds so many new features and bug fi fixes and UI improvements, including the introduction of hierarchical organization using nested folders and tags, which makes organizing organization so much better and is something that I honestly can't live without with any note-taking app. And yes, I do use note-taking apps every day, especially with my show notes to jot uh, uh, thoughts down. I use that for LWW all the time. I do that with uh, note-taking apps. And you can also now pin notes to keep your most important thoughts and to-dos within reach. You can change the font size and width of text. That was an issue for me because the original version of the program 1.0, I could bar barely read the text, especially on my 4K monitor. And there is a new setting window that lets you choose from light, dark, or sepia themes. If you want that old school look, you go sepia. <laughs> That's cool. It kind of looks like CDE. Ven would like that. <laughs> and uh, you can now change the database path to sync your notes via a cloud provider. So a lot of really great enhancements to this uh, refresh of the notes app. This is, I've always followed this because I remember when this guy first posted about um, what he was working on the project way back when. Yeah. About mm -hmm. why he did it. 
Because it's like, yeah, all yeah. the note, note-taking apps that are available right now, especially on Linux, are just this electron-wrapped juggernaut. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need to download something that's like seven, 800 megs. It's a note-taking app. That's silly. Yeah. This is ridiculous. And I'm, I'm going to yes. do something about it. He's my kind of guy. You know, instead mm-hmm. of just complaining to the internet, I was like, let's see if we can fix it. And that was kind of the uh, origin story about this. And he decided to make it, you know, tracker free, open source, like win, win, win. Now you can get this, it's available on everything, you know, Snap, App Image, Deb, RPM, whatever it uses this week. It is there and it's small. How refreshing is it to see an app image for a note taking app? That's 30 megabytes. I'm like, yeah, that's about what I would yeah. expect a note taking app in 2022 it to be. Not, be. Yeah, not a couple hundred megs. Uh, it doesn't, you know, we don't need to bring the kitchen sink into this. <laughs> and it, I, yeah. Installed the app image. We installed it. I, I ran the app image on uh, Debian testing. Popped right up. It hung around longer than I wanted it to because my fault. I didn't pay attention. You know, I just opened. I don't typically use note taking apps. I use. Uh, I. It. It didn't feel like it was collecting enough private data from me, Jill. So I. I, I ran back to Google Docs like I normally oh, use. Okay. Uh, but I did <laughs> want to try it out to see if it launched, and uh, I closed yeah. it, or I thought I closed it. It was also smart. Just the app image stayed in my system tray. I'm like, oh, what is that? Oh, there you are. Isn't okay. that nice? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, mm. it's really cool. And another huge thing for me is that it has markdown support. So I can format my text while I'm typing. And I love that. And you can import and export your files to you know, other computers, other systems, or sync them to the cloud. And uh, yeah, this is an awesome project. And you can also support... Uh, the development of this project on Patreon and GitHub sponsors. Right. So, really cool. I kn- <laughs> and it has a dark mode. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> which is the only correct mode. I found this week. I had kind of interesting time doing it. Um, like, because of one wine application that I find myself using more than I'd like to, but it kind of, it makes sense for certain tasks is Winbox. Mm. which is the um, graphical front end for Microtik routing, you know, switches and routers, yeah. anything running router OS. And it just melts your face off. It, it is, you know, it is discord level light theme. Just, uh, uh, yeah. Like, how do I change the theme and wine? Is it possible? And it turns out you can create like a little style sheet and force to load and wine config. So yeah, my uh my win box now has goth mode enabled and it's all dark and moody. I'm like that's awesome. <laughs> that's I'm cool. very happy about it. Very, <laughs> very but yeah, notes, go check it out. This is gonna be in our show notes after the fact. But speaking of Patreon, if you like what we do and you want to support us, that's kinda of brilliant. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Pick a membership level. Each one comes with a special, mm-hmm. unique reward. But you know, it's stacking. The higher you go, the more you get up to and including we have an corporate overlord level, which fortunately mm-hmm. no one's taking us up on. Smart people on there. But we do appreciate your support. You get your name in the credits. You get a custom RSS feed with all the early stuff that we do. We do a couple of bonus things. We've got a pre-pre super shows and on Saturday, a little behind the scenes. If you're curious about what goes on there, that's available in audio and video format. We got a uh, spoiler cast we're doing right now for House of the Dragon and um, Rings of Power. Mm-hmm. Like 30 minutes episode recap each and every week. That's a new thing. And as I mentioned earlier, I like to put things out early to give people, you know, just a sniff test to be like, what do you guys think of this? Like, should I make any changes or do you see any like glaring errors? And it's real good back and forth feedback. Speaking of back and forth feedback, get access to our Discord. If you're a Twitch subscriber or a patron, hop in, but don't worry. We have IRC, and IRC is linked between Twitch, Discord, and um, there's a third one. What is it? IRC, uh, Discord, and Twitch. That's it. That's yeah, right. IRC. Right. You, it's it's the triumvirate. <laughs> it's it's the trine, man. It's yeah. the trine. My brain was trying to have a trying yeah. to have a senior moment. But that is good. When we're live, everybody can chat together. But yeah, we do have a uh, super secret private Discord. But uh, it's fun. I would tell you what they're arguing. Last time I checked, it was Golden Girls. Who knows? Who yeah. Knows? <laughs> we do appreciate your support. We got some people we need to thank. Uh, I need to throw down, because uh, Arthurian gifted uh, Marionette Sarah Souls oh. to Pedro. And okay. I think last week I dared mention that I didn't have a copy of Sirius M4, and that showed up. 
Yes. I awesome. appreciate the um, just attack vector of that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> there, now you have one. Uh, yes. I do want to thank a couple of new patrons. Mark, who joined uh, last week during yeah, this show, week, Linux Teamcast Weekly. Saturday. Yeah. And for the first time ever, uh, we were talking about this in the Marie show because mm-hmm. we do track media. That's another thing that you can come hang out. Community night, twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So fun. It's fun. It's <laughs> adult time, you know. Yeah, really, you can be any age, but most of us are like 30 and older, just chilling out, playing some video games, and we're playing Track Mania because we got a private server set up just for us. You know, we don't have to play with the randos, and we have a really fun group. People, people learning how to play. We're not great. We got stuff to do. You know, we got lives to live. We can't, we're not teenagers. We're not eight. We can't dedicate 15 hours a day to these games. So we're all kind of on the same level, and it's kind of fun. But for the first time ever, because when we launch the server, it shows up. And in the game, I have a little thing. It's like a description. I'm like, hey, this is for uh, patrons and Twitch subscribers. Da, 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 if you'd like to join. I'm not trying to sell you on it at all because I only have 12 spots. This is just letting you know because when you try to get in, there's a password. Mm-hmm. Over the 38 weeks that we've been doing this, numerous <laughs> times people will show up in Twitch chat. How do I get in server password, please? I'm like, No. If you want to drop one of your Bezos box subs on us, you can hop in. That's great. Love to have you. And they always disappear until last night. Until last <laughs> night when this Replay awesome. Gaming PT did the, hey, man, how do I get in the room? And of course, I'm, me being me, I'm like, oh, this again? Like, uh, read the server description, man. Don't worry about it. It's a Twitch sub pitch. Like five minutes later, it's like, all right, done. I'm playing now. Yeah, and then Nubbin, playing. it was fun. <laughs> Nubbin was like, new person. What? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Just calm down, man. Calm down. Yeah, the password's on. So we all had a good time with that. And also, uh, Oil of Hope. I want to thank you for increasing yeah. the Patreon page. We love Oil of Hope. Thank you for increasing your pledge. She's been around for a long time. Hovers it. <laughs> uh, if you want to help us out in other ways, share the show, all that fun stuff, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got Amazon wish list. Jill's got a bunch of fuzzy... Yeah, sparkly things. Do yeah, you have anything that needs batteries? I've got nope, rainbow nope. penguins and a, a, a plastic uh, display for my keyboards. I have so many. I'd like to put them on display. <laughs> so, like the one I showed earlier today. Right. Um, I have. You'll never guess what I'm up to, but you'll end up on this wall. There's your fair warning. You, you have no idea what I'm planning on building. It is a secret project. You could not possibly piece it together with what's on yeah. our studio wish list. Uh, don't even try. It is. There's a, that little epic processor in there. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was the joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just having fun with you, Vin. <laughs> We also have store.linuxemcast.com where you can cover yourselves in Linux Emcast merch all over your face, chest, and neck. We got stickers. We got penguins. We even got uh, hoodies. There's some hoodie designs that I probably need to work on. But yeah, we're and talking about I got the one time. chair shirt on. I'm trying to get everything <laughs> churned out. But Jill, have you ever played around with uh, IMPI devices? No, I have. I have not. Um, I know about it. Actually, I have at my work. I had to a long time ago, but I don't have to use it on a daily basis like some people do in the workplace. When I first think about that, (laughs) my immediate thought is dragging a crash cart through a data center back in the day (laughs) with probably the oldest about to break CRT dangling on the top of it with a VGA connector and scrounging up a keyboard trying to find where I need to be. I don't yeah. have good memories of this. I don't, but I like the idea of homebrew IPMI. It's management for your PC. You might want to buy a card and you're like, hey, I want to be able to connect to my PC and, and servers and, you know, thread rubber, uh, well, the Epic PC, stuff like that. You might have seen it. You're like, why does this still have a VGA port on it? Remote management. You can do a bunch of cool things. And um, we found something that kind of has basic functionality that you can add to your existing PC. And this is uh, Jeff Gearling. He did a little bit, he did, he did a whole video on this. This is the Blink VM PCIe, a full computer PCI Express card, IPKVM, that you can just plug into basically everything. And it gets the job done. It has all the basic functionality. We're talking power control, on-screen keyboard, remote screenshots, powered over ethernet. It doesn't have internal sensor monitoring. 
for the host PC, but it is low profile, only uses about six watts, 114 bucks without a Raspberry Pi. It's IPMI for the desktop. I thought this was kind of neat because, you know, use case. You're out, you need to cut your PC on, you need to get to something. I know this is kind of a weird use yeah. case, but you can do that. You can <laughs> dial into this thing, power on your main PC that it's plugged into, VNC into it, get everything, and it allows you to like remote mount drives and stuff like that. Or you can just check the health of it. Maybe you need to restart it. But it doesn't come with a compute module, which I thought was kind of like, oh, well, mm. I mean, it does if you want to pay the um, iron prize for it, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So the last time I've done a hardware based uh, IP KVM switching is like in the 90s. <laughs> so I haven't played with a modern. I And then I used to use VNC all the time. Uh, but this is actually really cool because this device, uh, the Blick VM PCIe, actually pinwheels the front panel power connectors from your computer so you can power the computer on like you normally do or power it on via ethernet via pi kvm and that's that that was a really sweet option i i love i love hardware and technology that uses the uh that pinwheels uh, signals from one to another it's just and, and that was really smart <laughs> and this is a great way to do this with a pci card instead of using your traditional ip kvm externally and you know at at it's only a hundred dollars uh um with uh without a pi compute module 4 or 200 dollars with a pi compute module 4 from aliexpress and honestly, this is still cheaper than other external IP KVM options. And it even comes with a VGA to HDMI adapter, an HDMI sync for locking in an HDMI resolution, and an optional low profile bracket card for those servers that don't have a lot My of space. My big takeaway from all of that is I'm like, you know what? I <laughs> want some HDMI sync adapters now. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do have one. <laughs> if you've had to deal with HDMI yeah. year over year and stuff like that, you wouldn't mind the occasional like obey me mode adapter. Like I need you to do this signal and only this yeah. signal, which auto adapt sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. The only two holdups I have with this, the price is right. I know 114 bucks without the compute module. It's on AliExpress, which is a huge negative for me. Which means you know you better hope it works. That's what that code is for. Because if it doesn't. <laughs> It will cost you more to ship it back than you paid for it. <laughs> and um, they have a compute module that you can get from them, but it's also marked up. So even uh, yeah. Jeff recommends, you know, going to the little Pi Watch website and trying to wait and hunt one down. But this would make a fun project. And this is one of those things. This is mm -hmm. one of those things that you never think about and you'd never use until you need it. Until you need it. And now yeah. it's going to be 11 times worse because you're going to think, Oh, and it exists too. I knew about one the whole time. Man, mm -hmm. this could have saved me X, Y, Z. Well, just also just having one internally, that's not like a, a million dong dongles in the server room <laughs> of KVMs. This is just such a nice option and efficient. Well, typically, like any modern, modern board, like the um, I am getting ready to build an Epic oh. PC. And yeah. it's, it's IMPI is built into the motherboard, you know, True. all the way yeah. back to, uh, you know, like Pentium 2 level stuff like that and, but it is there and this is something you can add to a consumer motherboard which is neat which is nice mm -hmm. it's just there you just plug it in yeah. maybe you can pair that with uh i think he even mentions uh microtech has released a uh yeah. router on a he did yeah. card that i'd still i think it's like 200 bucks too like i have zero use for that thing but i kind of want it I'm like i don't know what i do with it just to play with it but yeah go check it out joe we are um mm -hmm. one minute Oh, okay. 10 One seconds under 40, 40 minutes. Oh, so we got to bounce okay. out of here. We got to yeah, run. We got to go. <laughs> I'm going to bring up here some we music. Go. Here's Let's our do credits. the credits real quick. Yay. Got to thank all our wonderful uh, patrons, including our new patrons. We got Mark and Replay Gaming PT. And we have our advisors. Which oh, Magus and our Theron Brigadin. We are executive producers, yeah. Barbara and Scott M, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Empty Drummer, and who I didn't get to. Yeah. Abstraction, <laughs> and however. Abstraction for Chicago. 
level. <laughs> and our sea monsters, System T, Darkwing, Nubbin, Veritanuda, Treadgills, <laughs> our Death Notes. Lots of people, yay! And Fox Dog, Gamatron, <laughs> Dodger. <laughs> we got everybody on there. Episode 344, wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week, all right? Okay. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs>